welcome to another new Rebots episode. Today, we will learn how to configure Ultra VNC remote desktop and share the KUKA local drives or folders in the network. So let's get started with turning on the controller. Now that we have the controller on, let me show you how Ultra VNC looks like. Since I already have the program installed, all I need to do is input the IP and a password. Then we will see this blue screen. It's not the blue screen of Death of Windows, but it's still a bit daunting. Don't worry about it. Just choose B and log in as a KUKA user. Then you will see the usual menu. Depending on your monitor, the screen might be a bit small. So just go into the settings and press auto. Now let's see how I install this software in the KUKA controller. First of all, I went into the official website and download Ultra VNC, x64 for our computer and x86 for our controller. Very important because the controller is running 32-bit Windows and it won't let you install x64. So now that we have both downloaded, let me copy x86 into a pen drive. I used the KUKA dock USB and plugged it in in the controller. Now in your smart part, you will need to go into Windows. So you will need to minimize the HMI. To do this, as always, you will need to change the user group. Let's check our USB first. See if the controller recognizes the USB pen drive and the file is the correct one. As we can see, x86 is there. So we go into the user group and gain administrator privileges. Then we go into startup surface and minimize the HMI. Here we go into the pen drive and we install the program. We click next, next, and then here in the custom installation, we will need the Ultra VNC server and the Ultra VNC repeater. The server will be our controller and the viewer will be our laptop, the client. These are just IT terms. Don't worry about it. Just make sure you install the server. Since I already have it installed, I will cancel this installation. Let me show you the configuration in the server. So after the installation, you will need to go into the start menu and run the new program. So go into all programs, Ultra VNC and Ultra VNC server. You click on it and the program will be running in the background. You will know because you will see the small icon on the far right in the windows bar. It's the yellow icon with an eye. After running it for the first time, it will start up automatically every time you turn on the controller. But first, let's set up the properties. We right click on the icon and select admin properties. Then in advanced options, we will select RDP mode, which stands for remote desktop protocol. After selecting this checkbox, we will need to set up a VNC password. In my case, I chose the same password as the KUKA, which is KUKA. This way I won't forget. Now let's go back to the HMI and go into network configuration. We will need to open a port. The port for RTP is uh, 5900. To share this port, just simply press NAT and add port. As you can see, I've done this previously. If not, you wouldn't be seeing this screen, of course. But let me do a demonstration. So you put the port armor and then you select the protocols allowed. In this case, you will need TCP and UDP. And once you've done that, just simply save the settings. After changing network configurations, you will have to do a cold start. To do that, you go into shutdown, select reload files and reboot the control PC. I won't do that because technically I haven't changed any configuration. Now, going back to the computer where you will be viewing the smart pad, you will also have to install the software. But remember to use the x64 version. It will be more optimized for your memory. As long as you have 64-bit Windows version, which most computers have. As you can see, the installer is the same, but this time we will only select the viewer. We click next, next, next. And then I will cancel my installation because I already have it here. So I will just double click and show you how to connect. As I said before, we'll just need to input the IP. The IP, we can see it's the same IP for everything. Just go into network configuration 
mine is 192, 168, 50, 205. Then it will ask you for the password. In my case, it's KUKA, as I said before. And now you can see I have double screen. In the next half of the video, I will show you how to share a Windows drive or a folder. This way, you will be able to share files in your local network without the need of a USB. Let's go back to the controller. As always, we change the user group first and we gain administrator privileges. Now we go into Windows and we go into Control Panel. In Control Panel, we will have to go into User Accounts and add a new user. So we create a new user. In this uh, example, I will call it Share. The user will have to have a password. So we go into the user and create a new password. In this example, the password will be share. We confirm the password. So we type it again, share, and then we will leave a hint, easy hint, share. Now we will just need to right click on the file, folder, or hard drive that we want to share. In this example, I will use KUKA data to share. Uh, I'm having some trouble with a remote desktop, but don't bear in mind, you just need to select the hard drive. Let me select the hard drive, click on properties, go into the sharing tab, advanced sharing and permissions. In the permissions, you will have to add the new user. So we click on add and we put share. Then we check the name and we click OK. To be able to create new files or edit files, we'll have to have full control. So we click on full control, allow and OK. Then OK again and close. Let's check if I can access the KUKA controller hard drive on another computer. So on my laptop, we write uh, backlash backlash and then the IP address and we click enter. Same IP address as always, 192, 168, 50 and 205. You can see that in the network configuration. This is not exclusive to this KUKA video. You can do this with any computer or server. You can access any shared files, or folders by using the double backlash IP address or DNS. Here you can see I've already accessed the partition D of the KUKA controller. However, you can see that there are more folders shared, but I don't have permission to another folder because it's in the C hard drive. The other one we can still access. To gain permission, just repeat the previous step. Just select the folder or hard drive, right click and go into the sharing tab. So let's do a final test. Now we don't need a USB. You can see the folder has been created in the smart pad. Also the file that I just copied, it's there. And probably this txt file will also be there when I finish creating it. But that's not all. There are two more things that I want to share. To avoid having to input the IP address every time, we can create a direct access. We can create a shared folder or connect to the unit. I prefer connecting into the unit because it will appear as a new drive. I prefer this one more because you can see the storage limit and the capacity. But also you will have a letter assigned, so it's easier to locate things. And you can even install programs and run them locally through the network. But if you don't feel like mounting the drive, you can right click on a blank space on your computer and add a new network location. Both of them will ask you for your credentials, but since I have accessed the network before, it's not asking for the username and password. To access this drive, I use the user we previously created, username share, password share. As you can see, both direct accesses go to the same location but I believe one is more complete than the other. That's it for today. Thank you for watching this video. And as always, if you have any suggestions, doubts or questions, just leave a comment on the section below. And as always, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you're thinking about buying new robots, head to our website, eurobots.net. There you will find new and used robots.